Okay. <laughs> I went ahead and made us some hot chocolate. The whipped cream is melting pretty quickly because it, it is pretty hot, so. Um, which one do you want? More or less whipped cream? Less? More. Oh, okay. Here. Cheers. Hmm. Mm. So good. Oh, you have a little something. I do too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's that's so embarrassing. Here, let me um get us a napkin. One sec. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a little messy, but really delicious. I'm gonna have a few more sips of mine. <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted to thank you again for coming over tonight. I'm really excited to spend some time with you. I cleaned my entire place, so it would be perfect when you came over because I wanted to impress you. I, I have to be honest. I've been really nervous for this, so if I seem a little antsy or scatterbrained, it's it's just because you've been on my mind pretty much all week, all month, all year, really, since we met. And having you come over was a really big deal. So, anyway, thanks again for actually showing up. You would be surprised how many people just don't end up coming after... I've invited them, even if they accept the invitation at first, they just end up ghosting me, but what can I do? I mean, they're free to their own time and will, and all I can do is accept whatever they choose. I'm really glad that you decided to show up. Hmm? Do you like your hot chocolate? Yeah, I put some sprinkles on the top. They're actually called parlor sprinkles. Not really sure why. I think they also are called pearls or something. But they're really crunchy. And I actually prefer to get those over like the rainbow ones because they don't have any food dyes like Red 40 or anything like that. So yeah, that's why I chose those. I know they're not very festive, but it's okay. As you can see, I haven't really decorated for the holidays. I'm not quite a holiday girl. At least this year. I've been going through a lot, which is also why your company means a lot to me. So, anyway, please excuse the lack of festive decor. And in place of it, we have plenty of holiday treats. Like this hot chocolate, for instance. And over on the table, I do have a couple more scrumptious goodies for us to indulge in. We'll get there, though, with time. I wanted to maybe ask you a few questions while I have you here, if that's okay. 
<laughs> no, nothing super personal or um, out of left field, but I just figured I could, you know, throw a few icebreakers out there and see if it helps ease things along. What do you say? Would you be open to answering some of my questions? <laughs> um, I think you still have a little whipped cream on your face. Do you mind if I get it for you? <laughs> yeah, it's sticky stuff, huh? Melts pretty quickly, but it also dries pretty quickly after it melts. There we go. That looks a lot better. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was a little too up close and personal. No? Oh, good. Um, well, my first question is how come you're alone right now during the holiday season? Why did you not go visit your family or anything? I, I'm sorry if these are too personal, but I've just been curious since you said you were available during the holidays and I feel like it's usually the other way around. Most people aren't in town or free to do anything externally from their family, so it's just interesting to me. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. Well, I'm very flattered that you decided I was a worthy member of your company. And I hope to prove that true as we spend more time together. But also, I'm sad to hear the circumstances that brought you into your availability. Thank you for being honest and open and vulnerable with me. I really appreciate that. And if there's any way I can return the favor, do the same. Don't hesitate to ask me any personal questions. Oh, why am I alone? Well, it's a funny story. I was going to go back home to my family this year, but they made plans without me. Mm, right under my nose. It was also kind of my doing. They told me in advance, but I wasn't really paying attention when they were explaining things to me. Kind of went over my head and all of a sudden the date were creeping up and I had no plane tickets or hotel reservations and well, it just seemed easier at the end of the day to not do it. So here I am by my lonesome this year. Well, not quite alone, thankfully. I really can't put into words how grateful I am and just pleasantly surprised that we get to spend these days together. I guess I shouldn't be presumptuous. It's only our first evening. <laughs> Forgive me for anticipating that we will be continuing this into the future. Those, I'm sorry, maybe a bit naive of me, but I'm allowed to get my hopes up sometimes, right? Especially 
during this season of the year. This is the time where dreams come true and wishes are made, so I don't see the harm in finding optimism, perhaps, lack of a better word. I tend to be a realist, so some optimism is welcomed. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry I'm rambling. Um, I did have a few other questions, unless you're already over the small talk and ready to get to some food. You're not quite hungry yet. I'm glad that the hot chocolate is tiding you over for now, but please save room. I have cookies and a very special sort of, I think candy is what it would be classified as. It was gifted to me by a friend and I was really hoping we could share them together and to be quite honest with you, I have never actually tried them personally, so it will be my very first time indulging in one. <laughs> I have seen them before in movies, specifically Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but I've never had the pleasure of having one in person, so I'm really excited for that. Maybe you know what they are already, and if not, you'll see very soon. <laughs> so another question, then? Okay. I'm gonna keep it in theme with the season that we're in. What is your favorite holiday tradition? that you do either with your family, friends, or maybe even by yourself. I have some loner traditions of my own, most of which I haven't really told anyone about because they're just for me, but I'd be more than happy to share them with you after you tell me yours. Oh, go on. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm listening. Hmm. Sure. Cool, yeah. I think I've heard of that before. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. I can, I can see that, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That all sounds amazing. I'm really happy that you've been able to experience that for so many years in a row. Yeah, not everyone gets to do that, so that's pretty incredible in my book. Oh, you're making me blush. You're very sweet. No, I, I really think so. I really enjoy being around you. Of course. I actually invited you here because as I was going through my mental list, of people that I would feel comfortable spending the holidays with. Given my circumstances this year and the fact that I'm feeling a little sensitive, you were number one on that list and also pretty much the only person who made it to the list. No one else really qualified, so 
don't know, there's just something about you that makes me feel really calm and relaxed and just free of any worries. I feel like I can take a nice deep breath around you and let the weight of the world off of my shoulders for a while. It's really nice. A very pleasant and soothing experience. You are so generous. The things that you say are so kind and genuine and pure. You seem like you just always have the best intentions. I wish that I had more people like you in my life. I mean, to be fair, I would just clone you a million times over if I really had the choice, but we haven't quite normalized cloning yet, so I'll have to wait a little bit longer before I can do that. But once it's possible, do you promise you'll give me a sample of your DNA so I can make a million of you? It will be with the best of intentions, of course. No malpractice performed anywhere along the way. No. Absolutely not. No army of clones taking over the world, nothing like that, no. Just a girl and all of her bestest friends. So you promise? Okay. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it then. <laughs> More questions? Um, you know, I actually can't think of any right this second. Let me, let me just take a moment for myself. This hot chocolate is so delicious. A little messy, but worth it every time. It's so good. <laughs> I didn't have any of the baby marshmallows, though. I was a little sad about lacking those, but it is what it is. It's okay. I don't think I have any more questions. Did you have any you wanted to ask me? Y yes, I'm single. Are you? Okay. Cool. <laughs> I was kind of hoping so. And also assuming you would be considering... This is kind of a date, right? Yeah, I thought so too. I was treating it like a date at least, so. <laughs> if you're doing the same, that makes it a date, officially. Very exciting. I think the last time I went on a date to answer your question was mm, probably earlier this year. It went pretty well. Um, again, though, they never texted me back after a certain point, stopped returning my calls. You know how it goes, just the silent rejection. No reasoning or explanation. Just 
just ceasing contact out of nowhere. It's really hard not to let that get to you. It hurts a lot more than people think. It'd be a lot easier to just say, sorry, I'm not really feeling this anymore, or you were amazing. I just personally didn't feel like it was a good match for me, etc., etc., etc. A million and one ways to tell someone you don't want to be with them, and still people choose to say nothing. Hmm. I'm really glad you haven't been like that. I feel like in all the time that I've known you, you've been very, very consistent, especially in your communication, and that means a lot to me. Probably a lot more than you realize, but I have a feeling you might understand. It seems like you resonate with a lot of what I'm talking about, so... I don't know, it's just cool to be with someone that gets it. Not to say that, I mean, we're with each other physically, not, like, together as a couple or anything. I know that's moving a little too fast for right now, but maybe someday. I'm making myself blush. I would really like that. I know we haven't really had many conversations about things getting more serious, but I, for one, vote that we do that someday. Explore the possibilities. I really like you, yeah. Do you like me? Cool, cool. <laughs> well... <sighs> okay, I'll tell you what. Let's put our compatibility to the test. We are going to try the treats that my friend sent to me. Do you want to know what they are or do you want it to be a surprise? Okay, surprise. Good answer. Well, there's three different flavors, I believe. I think three or four, but I'm pretty sure it's three. We're going to try every flavor, and if we have the same favorite flavor, we should probably just start dating, like, tonight. Right now. If we like different flavors... Mm, that's okay, too. We should still see how it goes in the next couple of days, since we're both going to be free and available. Plus, I mean, like, what a fun time of the year to fall in love during the holidays. We could maybe even, you know, hang out on New Year's, have a little New Year's, or something. Just an idea. Just a thought. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really nice by the fire. I'm very, very cozy. The fire plus the hot chocolate, it's pretty ideal. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to try the treats? Okay.
like I said, I've seen these in a movie. I've always, always wanted to try them. And here they are. Turkish Delight. Have you ever had one? A long time ago. Well, these are Turkish delights with a mix of fruit flavors. Rose, lemon, and orange. And we're going to figure out which one is each of our favorites. I'm just going to run my fingernail down the side. Try and open this. There we go. Judging by the way the packaging feels and the way my fingers are starting to look, I think these are going to be a little bit powdery. <laughs> they seem like they have a powder coating. So just... Hello? Keep your napkin handy, just in case it's more messy than I'm anticipating. Are you ready? Ooh. Very fancy. Oh wow. These already look really interesting. We can guess. Hmm. I think this one is orange. Mm hmm. Would you like to try? Not bad, right? Hmm. Let's see if I can find a different flavor. It's hard to tell. They all look the same from the outside. I'm gonna pick one from the middle this time. Huh, my fingers are very powdery. Alright. I don't know if this is... Powdered sugar, it kind of just tastes like flour. Mmm. It 
rose. This one is very, very floral. It tastes like eating a rose petal. Try it. <laughs> you don't really like that one, huh? <sighs> okay, that's okay. Let me see if I can find the last one. I feel like it might be sectioned kind of like one, two, three. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end over here and see what this one is. Mmm, lemon. Try this one. Okay. <clears throat> Orange, rose, or lemon. Which one did you like the best? <gasps> no. Way. What do you think? Mm -hmm. That was my favorite as well. Mm -mm. Of course, I'm not just saying that. It's true. Although I did really like the rose as well, but That one was my favorite, too. You know what that means. Mm-hmm. We're compatible after all. <laughs> Do I have anything left on my face? No. Good. Um, yours looks mostly good. You have a little something here. There you go. Go like this. Uh-huh. Yeah, right there. No problem. Oh, you like when I when I do that? Some people think it's gross that I use my saliva. Which word do you prefer? Saliva or spit? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll be sure to keep that in mind when we're speaking about the secretions of the mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's really not that serious. I'm just being silly. Well, anyway, the Turkish delights were quite a sensory experience. Very stimulating. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Did you want any more of those? Or shall I put the lid back on? Okay. I am going to go ahead and Put these back and I figured I would ask while I'm over there would you like me to grab you one of the cookies that I got they are a ginger and molasses cookie 
with a royal icing on top. Some of my absolute favorites. Do you want one? Oh, I would be more than happy to share with you. I'll grab one for us to split. You don't have to eat a whole one. We can do half and half. I mean, since we're basically a couple now. <laughs> Thanks to our Turkish delights. Predicting our compatibility like the experts that they are. I look like I've gotten some powder on my sleeves. I didn't realize wearing black was going to be a disadvantage when eating these. I'll have to wear white next time. <laughs> Question. Earlier, you picked the cup of hot chocolate with more whipped cream. Did you want a cookie with more icing or less icing? Less? Are you starting to reach your sugar capacity? Understandable. No, I totally agree. I'll get the one that has less icing. <laughs> it in half, but it didn't exactly break very evenly. I'm gonna give you the bigger half. No, I, I insist. What? You want me to break your half in half? Okay, <laughs> I can do that. They're just not breaking very evenly, I don't know what to tell you, but here, just take the bigger half, please. Cheers. Mmm. So good. Mmm. Honestly, if I were Santa, <laughs> if I were Santa and I found these cookies waiting for me on a tray, I would just leave my entire sachet of presents. No questions asked. So good. They're so good. Are you getting sleepy? I could tell. Yeah, I've been pretty steadily feeding you sweets since you walked in the door. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Do you want anything else to drink? Like water, maybe? Yeah, here, let me get you a glass of water. some ice in it for you. Is that okay? Here you go. Of course, no problem. I honestly 
was getting a little thirsty myself, so that's part of why I was wondering if you were also feeling a bit parched and just overloaded with sugar. <laughs> it's totally fine if you want to begin, you know, winding down for bed. I actually have a book that I was wondering if I could read you the first few pages of. It's a book that I found about two years ago, and it kind of changed my life a little bit. Do you mind if I read it to you? I hid it behind this pillow. <laughs> it's called The Awakening by Sidra Shafri. And I'm sure you'll understand what it's about as I begin reading it to you. You are by no means required to stay awake. And I actually wouldn't mind if you fell asleep. Introduction Experiencing the Awakening It is no accident that you picked up this book. It may be that on some level you already know that it's time for a change. Perhaps you are living a life you didn't choose or a career someone else thought would be a good idea. Or you are now following a particular path because that's what you thought you were supposed to do what was expected of you. You may also notice how in certain situations you sound just like your mother or react exactly like your father without even thinking about it. Perhaps you have started to notice that some of your behaviors are self-sabotaging or you have acquired habits that you can't seem to shake or you are simply aware that your life doesn't feel like yours or have a disquieting sense that your life is not everything it could be. You may even have started to realize, as I did, that you are living what I call a program. By which I mean, a life you didn't consciously choose, but are unsure of how to break free from those binds and reclaim the life you do want. Awakening 
will show you a way to take charge of your life once again. And the first step on the path is to recognize all those beliefs, behaviors, and values that don't belong to you, which developed as a result of your upbringing. For instance, family traditions, cultural background, education, environment, gender, religious beliefs, and other social pressures. Once you do this, you'll be ready to create new empowering ones. Beliefs, behaviors, and values that will propel you forward in life. So, to discover the true meaning of awakening, you must first spy on your life and begin observing your reactions and behaviors. In doing so, you will become aware of all the programs and plugins that have been directing your life thus far. However, awakening is not an event or a set of rules to follow. It is a process that helps you to separate other people's issues from your own and allows you to take full responsibility and charge of your life. Before my awakening, I felt disconnected and hollow. It didn't occur to me to question why I wasn't enjoying life. I thought it was just the way things were. I looked around and saw many people doing the same and simply accepted things as they were. Without realizing it, I was living my life according to others' expectations, opinions, feelings, and experiences. Since awakening, I have lived according to my own truth, instead of being pulled along by an invisible undercurrent. I feel blessed that I understand how to be happy, and I want to honor this knowledge by sharing what I call the nine principles of awakening with you, so that you can also have the courage to acknowledge and live with the truth of who you really are. I discovered as you will too, that life's most challenging lessons are the ones that eventually set you free. You'll discover it is no coincidence that the awakening has found you when you need it most, just as it found me. I look forward to being your guide on your journey of awakening. Signed, Sidra Shafri. Would you like me to keep going? I can tell that you are getting very sleepy. So perhaps we will just read the beginning of part one. Perhaps another one. pages. We'll stop at discovering energies. That should leave us in a good place to pick up next time we're together. Maybe even in the morning, if that
that's what you would like to do. Part one, awaken to the nine principles. Who looks outside dreams, who look inside Who looks outside dreams? Who looks inside awakes? Carl Jung. Introduction Dying to Live Birth of the Awakening. only source of knowledge is experience. Albert Einstein. On a warm summer's day in 2002, I woke up in a bed and couldn't believe that I was still alive. My head was groggy from the overdose of sleeping pills I'd taken, and every muscle in my body felt stiff and raw. I couldn't speak or move, even to open my eyes. Drifting in and out of consciousness, I found myself in a peaceful state of bliss. At that moment, something lit up inside my head, and I watched as my entire life story was projected like a movie in my mind's eye. I viewed scenes from my family life, conversations with friends, arguments and snapshots of moments that defined the choices and decisions I'd made. Watching myself play the starring role in my very own blockbuster, I felt oddly clear-headed and detached. Being an observer with no emotional involvement, I suddenly knew what had been causing me so much pain. Not wanting to be here was not new, but something I had lived with all my life. I was born into a middle-class family in Karachi, Pakistan. When my mother was pregnant with me, she prayed for a boy. She already had a daughter, but in that culture, boys are considered to be an investment in the future while girls are a liability. This feeling of being unwanted later manifested as headaches, nausea, and stomach aches. While still only a young girl at school, I displayed neurotic patterns and sought relief in food, self-harming, and anything else that would put me in the center of my parents' world. Of course, they did take notice, but not in the way that I had hoped. By the time I took my first degree, I was an emotional wreck. To others, everything appeared to be fine on the surface, but underneath, I was struggling. The same internal struggle continued after I'd married and moved to the UK. Everything should have been good. After all, I had escaped from my domineering parents and was now living a comfortable life with a good husband and 
by that time, a beautiful sun as well. A dream life for most young women of my background. I couldn't understand why I still felt anxious, lonely, unwell, and ill at ease. And it was those feelings that led me to take an overdose. It wasn't the first time that I had tried to take my own life, but this time, I was determined never to feel those same intolerable feelings again. Only to wake up a few hours later, staring at the same ceiling before losing consciousness. I felt I had done everything I could to feel different, and it, my escape plan had failed. The newfound knowledge that I had always felt this way, while helpful, didn't exactly offer a solution. So, when I gained full consciousness, I started praying intensely for help. Listening for an answer, I suddenly recalled what my school teacher had said to me years before. On hearing that I was moving to the UK, he told me how all of his students dreamed of such an opportunity and encouraged me to continue my education. He said, leave everything else, but never leave learning. They say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And those words pulled me back from the brink. After that day, I realized that no matter how many times I cried or tried to take my own life, there was something bigger than me that was determined that I would stay on this earth. I had been given another chance. And at that point, I made a decision to continue studying again. I enrolled for a second degree in management and law, and it was there that I discovered my passion for human behavior and my purpose. I wanted to help other people, but I knew I had to find a way to ease my own pain first. So, I read every book I could find on health, wealth, and relationships, and completed diplomas and attended countless workshops on personal development. I loved being a perpetual student, and various seminars and courses kept me going in my quest to help people. I was determined to find the root cause of what keeps us stuck and discover a way to rise above our challenges to create the life that we truly desire. Unlocking the mind. I started to understand how our values and beliefs are the sum of the programming within the psyche and so began to search for a way to rewrite my programs neuro-linguistic programming or nlp granted my wish developed by richard bandler and john grinder nlp is a powerful mind tool that makes the connection between the three components that allow us to perceive the world. Neurology, how we think. Linguistics, how we communicate. And programming, our beliefs, behaviors, and emotions. Training in NLP provided me with a set of tools and teaching 
that gave me access to that central storage system, also known as the mind. Now, I understood the mental processes underlying my behaviors and had strategies to replace those pr programs with more empowering ones. I was still troubled, however, because there was still so much I didn't understand about why I had developed all these feelings. Shortly afterward, however, I started studying energetic NLP, or ENLP, developed by Art Geyser, and had a breakthrough that was to complete my awakening. One evening, while in an ENLP workshop, I felt a massive knot in my stomach. My body seemed to be reacting to the workshop leader's words and, at one point, I felt as though I couldn't breathe. So I asked, what's going on? He closed his eyes and, smiling, said, Oh, it's your mother's anxiety. You are breaking free from your ancestral patterns. 98% of who you think you are is not truly who you are. It's other people's energies in your space. Their beliefs, attitudes, stresses, and fears all influence your behavior. His words opened up a world of questions for me, but finally, I knew where to look for the missing piece. I'm going to go ahead and end there for right now. I know that I didn't get very far, but what did you think of the book with the little preview that you got? Yeah? Would you be interested in reading more of it together sometime? Obviously not right now. You are very close to sleeping. Okay. Yeah, I, I would love to read more of that with you. Like I said, this book and this particular copy as well, as a huge part of how I changed my life in a very, very short period of time. So, just let me know if you want to read it again. I can also borrow this to you if you want to go home and read more of it on your own time. I would love that. Here. Take it with you. Of course. Knowledge is the whole purpose of this book. And the author wrote it to share. So, why would I not do the same? Oh. You know, this couch is plenty big enough for us to lie down. I could dim the lights a bit and we could get cozy and start beginning to fall asleep if 
you would like to. Sure. Yeah, let me just adjust everything. And if you want to go ahead and make yourself comfortable, I'll meet you back over here in just a moment after I've dimmed some of the lights and put some of this stuff away. Are you finished with your hot chocolate. Perfect. I'll go ahead and take that from you and I'll be back in just a second, okay? dimmed all of the lights. I got very tired. <laughs> Do you mind if I take one of those pillows that are behind you? Thank you. Mm-hmm. 